I welcome you, beloved, once again to the Way of Salvation program. And I hope the messages are helping you to become aware of the demonic and deceptive teachings. Today, uh, we are here again trying to learn more things about demons and deceptive teachings. In the last episode, episode, I handled their deceptive teachings in terms of the grace. As I said, we have taken the grace of God in an outrageous level that is very, very disturbing. That if you are someone seeking to live to please God, you will not say everything depends on the grace of God. Now, if everything depends on the grace of God, then what they mean is that you don't have to do anything according to what you are saying that it depends on the grace of God. Then it solely depends on the favor of God. Supernatural favor. You have nothing to do. If it, if it is so, then you don't have to live holy and please God. You don't have to live holy and please God because it depends on His grace. If it is also so, then you don't have to read the Bible and try to follow God's word in it because it depends on the grace. They even go further to say that you will pass God's judgment depending on the grace. If you, you pass God's judgment depending on his grace, then you don't have to do anything. And please, if you listen to this analysis, ask yourself whether it makes sense. If everything depends on the grace of God, then we shouldn't do anything. But God requires that we read the word and obey his word. And we live holy to please him. Without holiness, no man can see God. You can't enter the kingdom of heaven. So do your best that you don't you will not let the grace of God deceive you as a young Christian or as a, a, a lazy and a careless Christian who doesn't want to work out your own salvation. Please be warned. And don't be deceived. Some people are hiding under the cover of grace to harness their sins. They use the grace of God to cover up their sins. And I'm urging you not to be a part of that. May God help you. So that is a little thing I wanted to add to the last episode's uh, teachings. As I continue today about more of the demonic and deceptive teachings by their fake pastors, another thing I want us to look at is about some of the things they say. And what they want to look at today has to do with what this thing. It has to do with this. They say that you don't need any supernatural power after your conversion. You are okay with Jesus. Your salvation is enough. You are okay with Jesus. Your salvation is enough. My question is this. If I don't need Jesus and my salvation is enough, then my question is, what is the supernatural power you are talking about? I don't need any supernatural power. When you talk about supernatural power, you are attributing this supernatural power you are talking about to the ultimate power of God. That's what you mean. So if you tell somebody that he doesn't need any supernatural power after he is saved, then in other words, you are telling the person that he doesn't need the power of God. And that is erroneous. It is wrong to tell somebody that he doesn't need the power of God. 
If you say he doesn't need any supernatural power, it means he doesn't need the power of God. And that is wrong. You see? Are you saying that he doesn't need the power of God to combat demons in our daily spiritual warfare? Apostle Paul said correctly in Ephesians chapter 6 that we wrestle not with flesh and blood. That means on a daily basis, every Christian is dealing with the unseen power of demons. If you are wrestling with demons, you cannot say that you don't need the supernatural power of God. So that is to add today that if any man of God tells you that your salvation is enough, you don't need the power of God, that thing is deception. He's trying to let, uh, let you live in a carnal way, in a fleshly way, that demons can put you down. If the pastor understands that we are wrestling with demons on a daily basis, he will not tell you you don't need any supernatural power. You don't need anything after your salvation. When you are saved, you are wrestling with demons. So you need the power of God to combat them and win your spiritual warfare. If I am sick, if you tell me I don't need any supernatural power of God, then demons will put me down. They can, they can conquer me and then let me die in sin. So that is wrong. If you say that they don't need any supernatural power of God. So be warned and be aware that these are some of the things they say that does not make sense to the simple godly mind. It doesn't make sense. Okay. The next thing that they talk about is that they say that there is nothing wrong with practicing your cultural values as a Christian. In other words, there is nothing wrong to showcase your culture as a Christian. So that is what they say. When they say that they, they are mixing two things, they are mixing Christianity and culture. But let me use today to let you understand that culture and Christianity are two different things. They are two different things. When, when those pastors talk about culture, they don't understand what culture is. To inform you, let me take my time to let you understand that culture has to do with the way of life, especially the general customs and beliefs of a particular group of people at a particular time. So a group of people believing certain things and doing all the time, uh, believing certain things and living by them at all times. It also has to do with social norms and ethical values. Now this is what we call culture. After the fall of Adam and Eve, Every culture was influenced by demons because the people who started as a group of people believing and doing things in the same way were not influenced by God. Now, if they were not influenced by God, what influenced their life then? It was demons. Obviously, it was demons. So you have to understand that the driving force behind every group of people who didn't serve God in those days was demons. So if it was demons, then you cannot say that every culture has God in. Some cultures or most of the cultures in the world, with the exception of Christian culture, all other cultures don't have God in. So if you say that there's nothing wrong with displaying culture in church. You are misinformed. You don't understand what culture is. So let me take my time to explain certain things about culture. Every society has something to do with culture. In the Western cultures, 
most of them, they have their dressing motivated by their belief systems. They have their way of doing things. When I take dressing, the Western culture has a way of dressing. They all wear long skirts, long dresses to cover themselves because of the cold. Because of their cold weather, they all wear long dresses to cover themselves. Some of them eat certain foods in the new year. Some of them go to swim uh, in, in a very cold water in the winter. And some of them eat fresh fishes in the new year. So it has become their way of life as they dress and eat certain foods. When you go into the Eastern cultures, I'm talking about Asia, <coughs> China, India, Japan, so to speak, they also have their way of dressing. So as the Indians, you see? So Africans also have a unique culture and then we, uh, Africans also have a way of, of doing things. So every culture has something different from the other. Some are innocent, but some are religious. So let me tell you some of the innocent ones. When you come to the Western world, they eat with a cutlery set. You see? The Western world eat with the cutlery sets. When you go to the Eastern world, Eastern cultures, talking about China, Japan, they also eat with the chopsticks. And then Indians also, some of the Indians also eat with their bare hands. Just to taste the food, the heat of the food and taste it with their hands. In Africa, some people also eat with their hands. Because there are some foods you can only eat with your hands. So that is it with some of the culture, cultural practices. This, this, these cultural practices are innocent. Eating with your hand, eating uh, fish at New Year's Day, going to swim in the water. These are all innocent cultural practices. But when some of the cultural practices turns out to be religious, then it has got spiritual connotations with them. Let me give you one example. If Africans eat with their hands or with our hands, it is innocent. But when I begin to hold water or hold alcohol, maybe this is alcohol, and I begin to pour libation, I pour libation. That, that is uh, pouring the drink on the ground. Calling the names of the dead ancestors. Saying they should come and stand behind us and help us in the lives that we live on this earth. It has moved from culture to religion. This is no more cultural practice. It is no more an innocent cultural practice. It has become a religion because I'm calling on the spirits or I'm calling for the spirits of the departed souls. Are you telling me that there's nothing wrong to pour libation in the church? You see? That's the deception I'm talking about. Are you telling me that there's nothing wrong to call for departed souls? People who are dead and gone. Whereas God says we shouldn't call for any dead. Huh? Are you saying we should practice this in the church? You don't know what you are talking about. You see? If some people also give birth, they wash their babies in the mud. They, 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 they put mud on the baby and recite some incantation. Are you saying this is innocent? No. This has got some spiritual or demonic connections with it. Some people bath their children in, water, in blue water in grey water. They add some blue substance into the water and bath the children with it. This is also not, not innocent. It has some spiritual connotations with them. So these are some of the things that we can do and they are not innocent. If I come to dancing, we can get some, some innocent 
we can get some innocent cultural dances that are not uh, demonic. But there are some cultural dancing that has demons behind them. Please read my book and you understand some of these things. There are many cultural dances. If you perform them, demons will take over your life soon or immediately. You see? So you have to understand. These are some of the things that people do. That if you perform certain cultural acts that are innocent, God has got nothing to do with it. But the things that we do that bring spiritual powers behind, we call for the, the spirits and powers of departed ancestral powers, then you can tell that this is not a, a simple culture. We are talking about religion. You see? So you have to understand. People perish because of lack of knowledge. If you say you are a man of God and you don't understand the difference between culture and religion, don't put it, people into trouble. Don't put people into trouble. It is very sad today that even in the church, right in the church, some pastors organize a cultural day. There is a day they call cultural day. And that day, if the church is a cross-cultural, they can call all other nationals from other cultures to come and display their cultures right in the church. All these practices in the church are insult right in the face of God in his church. It is all because of lack of knowledge. Culture is serious. And to inform you, there is a big principality called culture. He is influencing all these things. This demon or this principality is behind what I'm talking about. So if you don't know what culture is, you think this culture is just uh, display of certain colorful things. No. If those group of people I talked about started their lives believing in certain ethical way of life, were influenced by demons, it is that principality I'm talking about. He is the one that initiated them into doing these things all over the world. So if you come to God, you have to abandon these cultural practices that go against the word of God and begin to practice Christianity from the Bible and abandon these things. Culture is another big hindrance to Christianity because in Africa we say it in a very nice way that you can't abandon culture. Why? It is saying that once you are born into it, you carry it. But it is not true. If you don't do away with cultural practices that go against the word of God, you can never enter the kingdom. That is why Jesus said, because of your culture, uh, sorry, because of your culture and tradition, the word of God has no effect in your life. That means culture is a big hindrance to the word of God. Please be informed and never sit in the church where they want, to, they want to entertain themselves and make the demons behind culture happy. We want to make our God happy by abandoning cultural practices. May God help you. I keep saying that I love you. I don't want you to go to hell, but to enter the kingdom of God. God bless you. Stay awake. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching this video. I really hope you have been enlightened. To hear more, you may subscribe to this channel and click the notification bell to see more videos. Pastor Kukudatsi has written a very informative book called How Demons Operate. Grab yourself a copy to know how they operate and know how to liberate yourself from demonic oppression. To stay in contact with us, you can reach us through these details. God bless you.